This is No Spin Live, and do we have a show for you today? Unfortunately, this is a gong show that happened in my hometown of Dallas, Texas. Doctor and a patient, they, they're gonna live stream her breast augmentation surgery, kind of cloaked as this is an educational thing. And uh, it's actually met a lot about it, a lot of resistance and uh, negative commenting from people who kind of slammed it as uh, marketing. And it's just, uh, what do you think, Jason? Uh, what, what's your, what's your, what, what's your take on this story? You know, we've covered this so many times. Plus, on in hot topics at ASAPs, so we talked about the streaming and the Snapchats. Look, we've all come to the conclusion this is pure marketing. It's only for the good of the plastic surgeon. This is not as good as for the good of the patients. If you want educational videos, look up on YouTube. There's plenty of ways you can see liposuction, facelift, breast augmentation. You don't need to see a live streaming video of some guy in his office. It's pure marketing. It's purely for the plastic surgeon's you know, bottom line in his pockets or her pockets. So I'm not a big fan of this. Do you like when people are trying to act like this is some educational thing? It's not the same thing you've been doing for 20 years? It's not that I like it or don't like it. I think the fundamental question is, is, is it legal? And the answer is yes. You've got a consenting patient and a consenting surgeon, and you've got you know all sorts of privacy issues that are underwritten, patients signed off on it. So I don't think it's illegal. I, I try to keep an open mind about this. I think there are a lot of patients and people who would actually enjoy it. I mean, people enjoy these reality TV shows, watching like, you know, Kevin Hart having a cup of coffee at a at a restaurant. People enjoy watching, you know, these nip tuck shows and, and botched. What makes it any different? It's just not as professional. The patient's consent, right? They say, well, I got the patient's consent, but the patient really doesn't know enough to what they're consenting to, because I think what Jason's point is a good one, and that's been brought up before. When the doctor has to be a showman, when they're really supposed to be a surgeon, that could be a problem. The patient probably has no idea about that dichotomy. We're, we're, we're a selfie generation. I mean, look at what is going up there on a daily basis. I mean, there are clearly patients that are gung-ho about doing this. So that's their end of the, of the, the ticket. But I think that the, the marketing people are the ones that are really putting us up to it for the most part. I, I, I can't tell you how many times they say like, well, Bill, you're, you're, you're one of them, right? Video is everything, right? What do we, we talk about? There's so much more conversion when you have, when you have video there. So that's what's propelling the market, um, you know, for us to actually uh, take those risks and, and, you know, put it out there. Sean, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I agree with everyone. I think it's a concern when this is happening, but I think from, it's creating uh, what we do or making it a commodity. You know, we do surgery. We have an intimate relationship with our patients that's, uh, that's sort of sacred and we are obligated to take care of them. And I think it's a very different scenario than doing live surgery at say a meeting where everyone's a professional and everyone understands that you're not showboating. But I completely agree. I think that this is not great for our our society, for, for plastic surgery. I think it's really different than putting a, um, an Instagram video of injecting Botox or filler, because I think that's a very different thing. All right, well, you heard it here. Great Most Spin Live, great insights from our, our panel of experts. Hope you guys have a great day. And if you want to see more of this, you can see it on the plasticsurgerychannel.com.